Hey guys, Ivan here, and let's start this video with Phil Heath Physique update, and of course, he did not really transfer to Classic Physique. It was a joke, of course, it wasn't clickbait, it was just a joke. So if you look at his physique right here, let's analyze it a little bit. So firstly, the thing that you can notice, just overall impression of his physique, he did lose some size, he definitely lost some size. He looks good though, he looks really good for Classic Physique, right? He looks very good, but he is too skinny for Phil Heath standards. You know, he used to be much, much larger earlier this year. Not to mention previous years when he was actually trying to win the Mr. Olympia again and again. Now, when he's, well, unofficially retired, he did lose some weight. Of course, it's only natural. Not really natural, I'm sure he's done something here, but probably some TRT or some low dosages or something. Doesn't really matter. The point that I'm trying to make is he doesn't need to carry around 250, 60 pounds when he is not competing, at least not soon. When he wants to come back, he can come back. He doesn't really need to improve on a single body part. He's complete. This guy is a genetic freak. He's like Kevin Leveroni, even better probably. So I'm sure if he just lost all of his muscle, he's here much bigger than Kevin Leveroni was when he was in his off seasons for the majority of his uh, competing years after his pack tear. He just didn't want to go through that uh, 24 hour a day and 7 days a week type of bodybuilding lifestyle because he didn't really need to. He had the physique. That was almost good enough to win the Mr. Olympia, but just not quite there. If he trained harder in the off season, he would probably be better than Dorian Yates. But, you know, that was a dominant, very dominant Mr. Olympia in the 90s, Dorian Yates, and later Ronnie Coleman as well. Phil Heath doesn't have somebody like that. Nobody's really dominating the stages today. You have Sean Roden, who is the Mr. Olympia 2018, and you have current Mr. Olympia Brandon Curry, but these guys are really not Phil Heath's level. So if Phil Heath wanted to stay skinny like this, I'm, I'm saying skinny, but he's probably bigger than 99% of the world, but for his off-season standards and for Mr. Olympia winners standards, he's skinny. But we'll talk about that in a second. I just wanted to say, if he wanted to stay like this, in the off-season and just prep for like four months, try to grow into the show, just like Kevin did, and if he fixes the most important problem of his, the reason why he lost the Mr. Olympia in the first place, his gut, his stomach, his midsection, if he can do that, he can win the Mr. Olympia 2020. But the way things seem at this point, I don't think he will be competing again. I don't think so. Based on all the things that I saw so far, I made a bunch of videos on this topic, a bunch of updates. If you guys have been following me, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, go ahead and check the older videos. But basically, based on everything, I don't think Phil Heath will be competing uh, ever again, really. Anything is possible. I hope he does. I really, really hope he does. Because look at this. This right here is Shiru Classic 2012, seven years ago. In about uh, eight hours or so, Shiru Classic in Bombay is going to happen. Will we have this sort of a lineup, <laughs> this kind of quality? Can we have this kind of quality at the Mr. Olympia? Not even close, these days are gone. These days are gone. I mean, look at these guys. Just look at Kai and Phil. I mean, Rolly is he, he's very good here as well. I mean, he's holding his own. But uh, what I'm staring at is Phil and Kai. These guys were something special. And I'm always saying about this because that was a good time for bodybuilding, really. We had an amazing, amazing, uh, actually, duo. Not only one amazingly gifted guy, but actually two of them. And they were always very, very close. And it was always an amazing battle, just like it is right here. During the early 2000s, of course, we had Ronnie Coleman, who is the best bodybuilder ever. But it was always pretty, pretty much obvious that he's going to win the show. It wasn't that interesting, really. In the 90s as well, I mean, Dorian was very, very dominant Mr. Olympia, Lee Haney too. Even Arnold seemed pretty much unbeatable, but during the early 2000s, we had Phil Heath versus Kai Green, and it was always very close. The audience preferred Kai, really, but the judges are always in favor of Phil Heath. So Phil Heath won seven titles in a row, and I absolutely think he deserved every single one of them. And I just want to say once again, this was the quality that we need today, that we miss today. I'm not sure who is competing at the Shiro Classic, but I know who is competing, at least I know a couple of guys who are competing at the Japan Pro, and I'm going to talk about that in a moment. As for now, let's go back to Phil Heath's recent update, let's analyze this physique a little bit more. So, the basic impression of his overall physique, if you just take a look at his face, you know, 
if you don't really pay attention to single body part, any one of them, you can just notice that he doesn't look that huge. He's not super wide. He's not super pumped and full the way he usually is. So there isn't a lot of thickness that we can usually see on his physique. But then, if we analyze body part by body part, we cannot see all of them. But let's focus on his arm, because that seems pretty noticeable. It's not just the arm, but the forearm as well. This guy is known for having one of the biggest forearms in the history of the world, especially that radio brachialis and brachialis region. And uh, right now it seems pretty much, I wouldn't really use the word melted, but I would say downsized. He's definitely downsized. And his biceps as well. His bicep doesn't seem as full, as round, as thick as it used to be. It seems much smaller, more flat than usual. The tricep is not popping as well. That is pretty much the most obvious part of his physique that seems much, much downsized, unfortunately. The shoulder also, the chest, same thing pretty much. He lost, definitely lost, at least, I would say, 20 pounds or something. I mean, that's just my assessment. It could be just the angle or the lighting or something like that. You know, it's just one photo. You cannot really make these kind of conclusions and be 100% accurate. But I'm pretty sure that's how it is. What do you guys think? You tell me down below. As far as the legs, you know, older guys, when the age hits, they usually lose the leg size, the quad size. But here, his legs are looking very aesthetic, I must admit. And uh, they don't look big, not by any chance. They are not big at all. This is just really, really much smaller than it used to be. He definitely lost a lot of size in his legs. I mean, again, it could be heighting or the angle or something, but... I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure he lost a lot of size, a lot of size, he seems much smaller than before. Usually, when he's on and he's competing and everything, in off-season he's weighing about 280 pounds. Does this look like 280 pounds for you? No. This kind of does, really, and this is his off-season guest posing. And you guys know, when he's off-season guest posing, he doesn't just, you know, wake up one day and eats a meal and then goes to pose, no, that rhymes, he just uh, does a little bit sort of a mini cut probably, because he needs to be presentable all the time when he's on stage, doesn't really matter if he's competing or just guest posing, so this is probably a little bit less than 280, because he probably did a, a mini cut for a couple of days or something, to be more presentable, so you guys tell me, do you think this is the same like the photo before, no, no not, not even close, this could be 270 to 75, but the other photo is probably like, I don't know, 235, 240, something like that. So yeah, Phil Heath lost some gains, unfortunately. Does this mean he's not going to compete again? Ever? Is he retired? I don't know. What do you guys think? Tell me down below in the comment section. It could be, though. It could be, unfortunately. All right, enough about Phil Heath. Eight minutes of only Phil Heath talk. Damn, I hope you guys are still here because the next thing I wanted to show you is a GoFundMe campaign for Flex Wheeler, posted by Dennis James, and he's actually the organizer of this GoFundMe campaign, and we basically need to gather some money for Flex Wheeler, who just had the leg amputation surgery that is very, very expensive. And here we are talking about the Sultan of Symmetry, one of the most aesthetic open bodybuilders of all time, really, one of the greatest of all time. So if you guys are a fan of bodybuilding, if you have money to spare, go and donate and uh, the goal is $120,000. We already got up to $13,407, which is really amazing. I'm really happy to see this. This means that the bodybuilding community is uh, real. It exists. There is a big community. People are actually willing to help the others, especially when it comes to legends like this. So I will leave the link down below if you guys want to donate. So that's about it for this. Let's go with the next topic. So I already mentioned the Japan Pro, and here you can see Cody Montgomery, who is competing over there. Cody was one of the youngest IVB pros of all time. He turned pro when he was 20 or 21, I'm not sure. And uh, he's still young at this point, very much. He's only 25. So we'll see him competing against uh, guys like Regan Grimes, for example. And this would be Regan's most recent physique update. So this guy will be colliding at the Japan Pro stage. It's interesting that these guys are both very, very young. Uh, Regan is 26, Cody is 25, and basically, honestly, depending on the other guys, I'm not sure who else is competing, on the big guys, I know Juan Morel is doing it, I'm not sure about Cedric though, but if, if Cedric is doing it, Cedric is gonna win it, if Juan is competing, it really depends on Juan, if Juan comes on, he will beat Regan, if Juan comes a little bit off, which happens quite often, Regan will actually pull the win, but uh, will Regan be better than Cody? 
Well, honestly, in this pose right here, the most muscular, I prefer Cody. Because uh, I prefer his arms and he seems leaner as well. Although his chest is not as full and he's not looking that good from the back and he's shorter as well. So on the stage, it may be a different story, but as for this physique update here, I would go with Cody. He seems more ripped, I can see the shreds on his quads, I can see the veins, I can see the details in his chest and everywhere basically. He seems very much conditioned. So, is it possible that he wins Japan Pro? Probably not. I mean, we didn't see this guy for a long time. Not really a long time, but for like a year, maybe a little bit more than a year. So, we'll see what happens, but it's gonna be interesting to see these two youngsters colliding. Hopefully, they will be in the same lineup, uh, in the same callout actually. And uh, maybe even be the top two. I would love to see that. You know, some young blood battling for the title. That would be amazing. But we'll see about that. James Hollingshead, this man right here on the right, will not be competing. He made a post. Unfortunately, he is not uh, mentally prepared for it. His mother passed away earlier this year. So, so he doesn't feel ready for it. And he will skip it, unfortunately. I'm a huge fan of James. I think he has a huge potential. We'll see. We'll see though what happens in a couple of years. But the guy on the left, Lucas Sosladil, I think this guy did like 20 pro shows this year. I don't know how many will he do. Uh, I don't know if he's gonna compete at the Japan Pro. He's not very active on his social media. I didn't find the list to be quite honest. If you guys know, let me know. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised. This guy just competing non-stop and he's always shredded as hell. So if he competes, he can even win the show. He's one of the top Olympians, really. He was, I think, 7th or 8th place, something like that. Alright, so the next thing is about Rock, and this is not exactly bodybuilding, but Rock is an organizer of one of the biggest bodybuilding shows in next year, 2020, so I wanted to mention this, and he is actually going to be playing a role of Black Adam, so he signed with DC, and in about two long years, he will be playing the role of Black Adam, who is basically one of the strongest DC characters, superheroes. Not as big of a deal as Superman, but a pretty badass hero, you know. Rock wouldn't be able to play Superman. <laughs> not bold, not bold definitely, not this huge. He is very, very muscular and he doesn't plan on losing that muscle. He's training very, very hard for it. So he's gonna be uh, perfect for this role, you know. I don't really know much about Black Adam. I didn't really read the comics, but I googled it. So if you guys know more about it, tell me down below, but I think it's gonna be an awesome movie. I love superhero movies. I watch them. I don't really read the comics, to be honest, but I do watch the movies. And I think this is gonna be a really good movie for Rock. We don't really see Rock acting in a really good movie for a long time. He's been playing some uh, films for kids, really, like Jumanji and uh, that kind of stuff. The last time I saw him playing in a, in a good movie, in a comedy movie, was Pain and Gain. That was a decent movie. This is gonna be probably a good thing, I hope so. I mean, DC superhero movies are usually serious type of movies. Not all of them, but most of them. Like, for example, Shazam, if you watch that movie, that was pretty funny. It was, you know, mainly for kids. It was, you know, teenage type of movie. It wasn't really for grown-ups that much, but it was funny. It was fine, I guess. Not like uh, Avengers. Avengers are much better. But uh, the other DC superhero movies are a little bit more serious. And how serious can a superhero movie be? So we'll see what happens with this one. It's a badass role for a badass character, for a badass actor like Rock, Dwayne Johnson. I'm really curious. I'm really curious and I think it's going to be good. I really think this is going to be a good DC movie. So let's see what happens. Let's wait for two years. Anyways, this is going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, tell me and like the video, please. And I'm going to leave you with this photo right here, an old school photo of Jay Cutler who was huge in the offseason, look at that, look at those arms, look at the, those shoulders <laughs> and that huge, huge head and huge under chin or double chin, however you want to call it. So once again, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, subscribe for more bodybuilding videos and uh, thank you very much, guys. All the best and bye bye.